Welcome to Proper DIY. Today I'm on the top of the world, actually just the top of my house, but it feels high enough up here anyway, to show you how to install the Anki CCTV home security system. But all I have to do now is try to get down. This is the Anki H508 channel four camera PoE security system that comes with a two terabyte hard drive for video storage. It uses five megapixel cameras with built-in infrared LEDs that help illuminate objects in total darkness. The system records what you want, when you want, using the H265 Plus compression system that can store around 40 days worth of continuous footage and has user-specified motion alarms on each camera that can also alert you to movement around your property. It connects to your mobile via the internet so you can keep an eye on things wherever you are in the world. Because the cameras are PoE, that's power over ethernet, there's just a single cable going to each one that both powers them and takes the image data away, making them easy to install. I would definitely recommend anyone installing a system like this proves to themselves that it works properly before trying to install the cameras. If you do have a problem, it's so much easier to play around and troubleshoot when everything is in the same room as opposed to the cameras being spread all around the outside of your house, five metres off the ground. So I've got everything unpacked, and so far it's looking fairly straightforward, which is really good. There's a control box and what looks like a hard drive, which I assume I have to put inside the control box. There's a load of power cables and a mouse and that that I assume goes along with that. I've got the four cameras, and they give you in this kit two long cables and two short cables. I think these are 30 meters long and these are 18. The type of camera that I've gone for is this white dome type camera that you can move about everywhere left and right and spin. And I'm planning to fix these up underneath the soffit near the roof. So I've just had a very quick flick through the user manual and really pleased to see the phrase plug and play, but then I'm somewhat dismayed a couple of pages further on to see the word configure, which sends chills through my spine. Now, I'm pretty good at IT, but when people start wanting me to configure things, I have visions of spending hours getting absolutely nowhere. So hopefully things won't be that bad. So what I'm gonna do now is to temporarily set up the system here in the garage and see if I can get some video through to a TV. If that works out okay, I'm gonna take this inside, plug it into the internet and see if I can configure it Hopefully, if that works, and only when that works, I'll be inclined to start trying to fix these cameras to the house. My first job was to install the two terabyte hard drive, which involves fixing it into the main housing and then connecting a couple of cables. Although I meticulously read every word in the instruction manual, the connectors are made in such a way that they can only be fixed in the correct way. Except if you're going to use a hammer, of course. Although the system comes with four cameras, it has eight channels, meaning that you can easily add more cameras if you require. Once the hard drive is in the system, it can be powered up. So I've got everything sort of temporarily set up. Really, I think I should have the internet plugged in before I do anything, but I just really want to see if I can get some pictures out of it first. Let's, let's give this a try, shall we? This is the power going in. I can hear a disk drive whirling away, so it looks like we've got something. Hey. That's a start, I suppose. 
As soon as it's powered up, the setup wizard runs you through setting the time and date, uh, add in passwords, etc. And very quickly, you have pictures. So we just popped out of the setup wizard and I've actually got some cameras. I can double click on these and I can see the whole thing. There's a little bit of a delay, maybe half a second, but that's not really a problem. And if I double click again, I go back. So I think that's all I can do now. I've established that the box is working, the cameras are working and it feeds through to the TV. I think I need to take it indoors and connect it to the internet. So I'm back in the house and reset everything up again. I've just downloaded the Anki app onto my phone and I've got to a point where I've registered, put in a password and obviously an email address and I've got add device here. So let's see where we go from here. For whatever reason, my phone didn't want to recognize the QR code on the screen, but it was very easy to add the required information and do the whole thing manually. It says it's linking the device to my account. We oui. complete. Oh. So now I've got the camera coming through on the phone and I must say, that was incredibly easy. With the system working, it was on with the installation of the cameras. I hired an aluminium access tower for this, as working off of a ladder five metres up when you need both hands for fixing the camera is definitely not recommended. You know, I don't use the tool belt very often, but there's sometimes that they really come in handy. I've learned as my time as a junior engineer on high-rise buildings, if you're going to go up high, you've got to take everything with you. These towers are very light and simple to put together once you know how. And with the proper outriggers fitted, extremely stable, even if they do wobble a bit once you're up them. These towers have flexible layouts and rungs at half metre spacing, so it was easy to position my top platform so the camera installation was at a comfortable head height. So they give you a drill template. I'm not really sure if actually this is particularly useful. I know where it's going to go. I think what I'll do is I'll drill the main hole first, get the cable in, then sort out exactly where the camera is going to sit. I taped the cable to a piece of plastic conduit which I could then feed into my loft to get it as far into the loft as possible, which means it's easier for me to pick up on the inside. So now I've got to go down all the way up into the loft to see if I can find the other end of this. On my way past, I untangled the rest of the cable so it was easier to pull through and added some masking tape a couple of metres from the end. That way I would know when to stop pulling before I pulled the whole lot through the hole into the loft, which would mean I'd have to start again. Working in my loft, which I haven't boarded out yet and there's only one temporary light, is really not a pleasant experience, so pulling the cable through was done as quickly as possible. Back outside, I used the template to mark the screw holes and got on with fixing the turret to the soffit. They supply screws with this set. And the last thing you want to do at this stage is to drop them, I think. Do not drop the screw. Do not drop the screw. Uh, success. With the plate fixed, the camera can be connected to the cable with the waterproof connector and the spare cable poked back into the loft and then the camera clipped in place.
The rotation and the direction of the camera is fairly easy to adjust just by hand, although it's also tight enough not to move in bad weather. So the good news is that was fairly straightforward, although quite hard work. The bad news is I've got another three to go. On good ground, these towers are easy and safe to move around on their casters without disassembling them, as long as the outriggers are removed and you don't leave anything on top that may fall off and ruin your day. To get the cables from my loft into my living room, there's no route through the house, so I installed a plastic pipe on the outside to be used as a conduit for these cables. Because the colour matches my other drain pipes, it just looks like a downpipe from the gutter system. I drilled a hole in the soffit so I could poke it in a few inches into the loft space and then fixed it with clips. But just as I thought it was nice and tight, using that tool belt was a really good idea. But this next section where I've also got the conduit, I'm taking up so much stuff that it's becoming a bit of a hindrance. I don't know if those openings are very narrow. I'm just too wide I don't know so I've gone to plan B and I've just fabricated myself a mild steel hook here that I've connected to some rope and I'm going to try to use this with a bucket with the conduit fixed and any gaps filled with sealant I carried on repeating the camera installation and going up and down into the loft and back to pull through the cables and fix the cameras. To safely move the access tower across my gravel drive, I disassembled the top section so it wasn't so top heavy and less likely to overturn on the uneven surface. This meant, though, a small amount of rear erection once back on solid ground. The prescribed safe way of doing this is to sit in the hole of the platform while building it around you until the handrails are in place. My newly fabricated hook came in really useful here when you don't have any friends around to help you. So to get a route for the cables between this outside conduit coming down the outside of the house and the control box inside the living room, I'm going to drill a 22mm hole through the cavity wall and then insert and fix this 20mm electrical conduit pipe. Now to do that, I've been and invested in a longer drill bit after learning my lesson last time and drilling from both sides. This is a 460 long 22mm drill bit, so it should easily carry the conduit plus a bit of silicon around the outside. I'm also going to be drilling slightly uphill. That means in the future, if there's any moisture gets in, it'll have the tendency to come out rather than go into the house. After making a starter hole, I angled the drill down and was really pleased to see it come out inside my living room in the right position. So installation is now 100% complete. The cables come down the conduit into the corner of the room here and I've just finished it off with a blank box as well. I'm really, really happy with the system and the picture quality is absolutely spot on. Those cameras are really, really clear. If I can just show you, if I go into the setup, each camera I can actually change the brightness and the contrast and the saturation. And the other thing I really like is the fact that you can set up motion detection on each camera that will give you an alarm on your mobile if it detects motion. Where with the mouse I can decide which areas have motion detection and which areas don't. So something like this road where you see this red blob coming along, that won't set off an alarm because I've only monitored this section at the moment. So really happy with that and all in all it was far easier to set up and to configure than I thought it might be at the beginning. The picture quality is absolutely great. I'm so pleased I've got it now. If you're interested in having a look at this system, although it's sold on Amazon, you'll get a better price by going straight through to the Anki website. And when they knew that I was going to do a video on this, they've actually given me a code 
for another 25% off. So go and check out their website and make sure you use the code PROPERDIY25 and they'll give you an extra 25% off this H500 security system. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So until next week, I'm going to be busy watching the neighbours.